If you are preparing for the PMP exam or you want to manage your project and you want to measure the performance of the project, then how to calculate EAC? That is, estimated completion is critical and you must know this. Now in this video, I'm going to teach you what are the different ways with which you can calculate EAC. There are four ways to calculate EAC and when to use which method. So this video will be very helpful for you and I've given enough examples for you to understand the different methods we use to calculate EAC. So let's get started. So far we have discussed about various EVM metrics. Uh, we discussed uh, about uh, EAC already. Now we're going to discuss more about EAC because there are more than one way to calculate EAC. In the previous discussion, we discussed about EAC and where we use this formula to calculate EAC value. We consider the current CPA value. So this is the AC value, this is the EV value. Using this, we calculated CPA value and we assume that uh, in the future, we're going to continue spending the money at the current CPA rate. And so we use this formula to calculate EAC value. Most of the project management softwares will use this formula to calculate uh, the EAC value. For example, if you take uh, MS project, it will by default use uh, this formula to calculate EAC value. However, there are a few more methods to calculate EAC value. Depending on the context, we need to use the right method. Before discussing other uh, methods, we will start with the fundamental question. Why we need to know EAC value? EAC is all about, uh, we are trying to make a prediction by end of the project, how much money we're going to spend. We want to know this number, considering the current situation, things happening in the project. And that's why we use CPA value to calculate the EAC value in this case. However, sometimes you don't want to purely calculate uh, uh, EAC value using uh, CPA and BAC. You want to use a different approach because you think uh, that would give you the, the more reliable number, EAC value. Remember, EAC is all about something we predict, what could, what could happen in the future. And uh, we want a EAC which is close to reality. Uh, if you say we're going to take uh, 7 million to complete the project, maybe in the future, when you complete the project, you might end up spending 16.5 million or 18 million. You want to make a guess that is will be close to the reality. When you are making guesses, you need to make educated guesses. Sometimes you think uh, calculating EAC value purely based on CPay won't help you to get uh, uh, a number which is which will be close to reality. So first, let's talk about uh, method two. So this is method one. Uh, we will first talk about uh, method two. Uh, uh, another way to calculate EAC value. So this is about end of the day, how much money we're going to spend when we complete the project. That's about EAC, right? We know this. Let's take the AC value. If I want to know how much money in total I'm going to spend towards end of the project, I already know I have spent some amount of money. We are done with six months of work and we have actually spent some amount of money. In this case, uh, AC value is uh, 7 million, isn't it? That's the EAC value. And when it comes to uh, EAC value, it's uh, it's $5 million. So that's the, not EAC, EV value. So we know that EV value in this case is $5 million. All right. And CPA is the, it's the function of uh, EV value and AC value. We know this. We calculate the CPA by dividing EV value with the uh, AC value. Now, I need to know the AC value because we are predicting how much money we're going to spend in total. For that first thing is we need to account the actual spending. So for how much money we have actually spent uh, AC and uh, I need to know how much uh, value of work I'm going to accomplish and uh, I'm going to operate with uh, what efficiency, cost efficiency. Sometimes you feel like whatever happened has happened. Yeah, the CPA value was not good. Sometimes it might be great. You might get a number uh, greater than one. In this case, it's less than one. Whatever it is, 
but I'm believing the future is going to be as I planned. I don't want to bring in the current CPA value into, into the calculation. Whatever happened has happened. I'm going to believe in the future. Things going to be same as how I planned things. Uh, the future is going to be same as I envisioned. So in that case, we're going to uh, use this method. So we take the AC value and then we need to add up worth of work. We get to earn. So this is about the remaining work. So how to calculate this? We did this. Uh, we know about this uh, number uh, from our previous discussion. In TCPI, we found uh, how much pending work we have using uh, BAC minus EV. You know this. So, if you look at this chart, so far we have earned this much amount of work, right? That's our EV value. We have earned $5 million worth of work and we plan to achieve uh, in total $12 million worth of work. That's our BAC. So if you want to know, this is my total work and this is the amount of work I have so far earned. Okay, this is your EV value. Uh, how much this is about? Okay, I want to know this value. So how to calculate? That would be your pending work. How much worth of work we yet to accomplish, to yet to earn. So how to calculate this number? We know the total value that is the BAC. So I'm going to take BAC and subtract the EV value from it to find the balance work. Okay, so that's exactly what we are doing here. So therefore, the final formula would be AC plus uh, BAC minus EV. So this is about uh, the actual money so far we have spent. And we are assuming the future is going to be as, a, as we planned, as we envisioned. I don't want to bring in the CPA value. So if you have a situation like this, then we calculate the EAC value using this method, method 2. Alright. Now, we have another method. Well, I know currently the AC value is this much. We have so far spent this much amount of money. And uh, I neither believe we will be doing the remaining work as planned with the planned uh, CPA rate. Or even I don't believe I would be uh, you know, doing the work with the current CPA rate. Okay, both are not valid. So the, to summarize it, you neither feel you will you will be able to do the remaining work with the uh, current CPA value, nor you would be able to do it as per your original plan. Then what shall we do? We're going to re-estimate the remaining work. So whatever work we have, we're going to re-estimate that work. So for example, um, let's say you have uh, in total uh, 120 work packages and every month you plan to accomplish uh, 10 work packages. So here 10, here 20. So 10 plus another 10 work packages, here uh, 20 plus another 10, 30. Okay, so by end of 12th month, you would be completing 120 work packages. This is your plan. Now you are done with uh, 6 months. So obviously we know that we have done with 60 work packages. And the total work we need accomplishes is uh, 120 uh, work packages. So you know that this is the total work. So far we have accomplished uh, 60 work packages. I'm believing uh, uh, the remaining work is 60 work packages. So I have to accomplish 60 more work packages. And it is right, isn't it? Now... I'm neither going to use the current CPA value to calculate uh, the uh, EAC, nor I'm going to believe the future is going to be as I planned. I'm going to re-estimate all this uh, 60 work packages and find out what is the worth of each work package. And I'm going to add them all. And that's about uh, the third method. Re-estimate the... Uh, Remaining work. Re-estimate the remaining work and um, add this value with so far how much money we have actually spent, the actual cost. So this this will give you a very realistic number. Um, however, 
uh, it's a time consuming process because reestimating 60 work packages or whatever work you you get to accomplish is not an easy task you need more time however this is valid this is a good approach for two reasons first is uh, the numbers you're going to get is going to be very realistic maybe when you did planning you made a lot of assumptions you were not much aware of the uh, project scope its complexity project risks and so on now after doing the project for six months you and your team members will be knowing many things about your project the product its complexity uh, the stakeholders risks and so on now if you re-estimate things probably you're going to come up with more reliable numbers and that will be very close to reality and uh, you should only use this technique when you feel well the future plan is no more valid nor you want to use uh, the current cpa rate to calculate the uh, eac that's about method three now let's talk about method four when it comes to method four it's very similar to uh, method one and method uh, two so this is method one this is method two I would, I would say it's a combination of method one and method two. It's a more sophisticated way to calculate the uh, EAC. If you take method one, we have calculated uh, EAC value purely based on CPA, right? And uh, you are thinking, well, I don't want to purely uh, believe in CPI. I also want to bring in the uh, SPA value. Why we need to do this? Let me ask you a question. Your CPA rate is poor. Let's say it's uh, 0 0.8. And your uh, SPA rate is good. It's 1.2. So in this case, you are not doing well in terms of uh, cost. You are spending more money than the amount of work you have earned. And when it comes to SPA, you are ahead of the schedule. We know this. Now assume you have spent more money in your project because of uh, deploying more resources so that you can complete more work you can earn more work yeah of course you have spent more money than the amount of work you have earned that's why your cpa value is poor less than one however you did this to uh, speed up the work you deployed more people you spend more money so that you can be ahead of the schedule and this is not a totally a bad situation half good half not good i hope you agree with me and that is the reason sometimes you need to consider spa as well when you calculate eac um i hope you got the the reason why we go with both isn't it uh, if you just calculate in this case if you just calculate uh, the eac value using uh, cpi well you are missing out a very important piece of information your cpa value is poor because you want to push your schedule you want to push your project to be ahead of the schedule and uh, this is something good so this project is not totally bad as a matter of fact the cpa number is poor because you wanted to have a better spa value so in this case it's it's, it's reasonable to consider both of them for eac calculation so what we're going to do here eac again we have to take ac and we have to take the remaining work okay so when it comes to remaining work we know that it's uh, BAC uh, minus EV remember I told you this is a combination of uh, method 1 and method uh, 2 now I'm going to divide this with uh, CPA value also SPI so I'm going to create a, a consolidated uh, number I'm going to put the uh, cpi and the spa value and i want to come up with a constant okay by multiplying cpi and spa so that it represents both cpi and spa so if your uh, cpi is poor your spa is good they normalize each other if your cpi is poor and your spa is also poor then it's going to magnify uh, it makes the situation more worst isn't it if your cpa as well as spa are better it's going to make the situation much much better i hope you understand what i mean okay so i'm gonna multiply cpa and spa value so that they know they complement each other normalize each other and uh, then i will divide the uh, remaining work by this 
value. So that's about method 4. We normally don't use this method unless otherwise you are very particular about the SPI value. Okay, so you think that uh, it's not okay to calculate the EAC value purely based on CPI. I also want to bring in SPI because that's going to uh, factor in our schedule performance as well. Our cost performance is poor because we won't have a better schedule performance. And now calculating EAC purely based on cost performance is not a good way it's not reasonable so let me factor in the spa in such situations we use this formula and this formula is uh, not used often in projects the a very famous formula is this one this one method one and i would say this one is also frequently used and you know that uh, it's a time consuming process all right now let's quickly summarize uh, uh, whatever we discussed so far Okay, these are the three new methods we learned to calculate EAC. So the first uh, one is uh, AC value plus uh, the remaining work. This is the actual cost spend and this is the remaining work. The worth of remaining work we plan to accomplish. Okay, and we don't want to factor in the uh, current CPI. We believe that the future work will be accomplished at the planned rate. You see the remark. Okay, the next method is uh, we uh, calculate uh, the uh, the EAC by estimating how much money we would need to complete the remaining work. We have to do re-estimation and we do bottom-up estimation. So we estimate each work package at, the, at, at their level and then we add them up and go to the top. That's why it's called bottom-up ETC. ETC means estimate to complete. Whatever work left out with us, and for that how much money we would need okay it's a time consuming process the third the final method is uh, the fourth method the final method is we want to add uh, AAC the actual cost with uh, the balance work uh, what we have here is the balance work and we want to factor in both cost performance and skill performance of the project great now I Assume some numbers here. Uh, these are the inputs. We needed to calculate the EAC value and I have calculated EAC value using all the four formulas we discussed. Uh, we have the BAC value, PV value, AC value, uh, EV value and then I also re-estimated the balance work. I have some number for that as well and CPA and SPA. I have uh, assumed both the CPA and SPA value are not good. That's the assumption I made. And I've used all the four formulas to compute the values. You see here, they are close, but uh, the values are different. Okay, so all of the four methods are good. You have to find the right uh, context to apply them. So it depends on the situation, depends on how you want to compute the EAC value. You need to think of which way to calculate EAC value will be more realistic, will be uh, appropriate for your project then use the right method and uh, by default tools like ms project uses this method so remember that and if you want to implement these methods to my knowledge we need to use the macros we need to write the macros and embed them inside the uh, ms project and you can get these values as well okay you can calculate eac value using this these formulas as well okay so that pretty much about eac and this is important for the exam. Also, if you are managing projects, you need to know what are the different methods we have to calculate EAC. Thank you. With that, we are done with this discussion. I hope you liked this discussion. If so, please give me a thumbs up. And also you can subscribe to my channel because I regularly come up with a lot of useful project management videos. So you can subscribe to my channel to learn project management at ease. Also, if you have any idea to take any project management training including PMP you can register in our bootcamp we have excellent reviews and ratings for our training also we offer this training for very affordable pricing the best part is you can attend the first two days of the training that is first 10 hours of the training for free to enjoy the training to assess its quality if you find the training useful and effective then you can continue with us 
The link for registering in our bootcamp training, PMP bootcamp is in the description. So please go and register if you're interested. I will meet you again with another interesting and useful video. Thanks for watching this video. Bye-bye.